Hello students, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is about the different types of centrifuges. You might have encountered all or some of these in your research work and your practicals. So today we will be talking in detail about their functions and applications. If you are a researcher willing to purchase a centrifuge, then this video will be helpful for you in reaching a decision. So let's dive in. While assessing a centrifuge, there are few important but obvious properties that you might want to consider. The first one of these properties is the maximum RPM that the centrifuge can achieve. That is whether your centrifuge is a high speed centrifuge or a low speed centrifuge. The second property is the volume of the sample that the centrifuge can accommodate. So it can be a low capacity centrifuge where it can accommodate anything of the range of a few ml or it can be a high capacity centrifuge and it can accommodate anything to the order of uh, maybe a few liters in a single spin. The third property is whether there is an option for temperature regulation that is is there an option for you where you can refrigerate your samples for the centrifugal run. This becomes very important if you are using biomacromolecules because a lot of times these uh, molecules are sensitive to higher temperatures and you would want to have a refrigerated rotor chamber while centrifuging. And the fourth important property is the size of the centrifuge that is whether it is large bulky centrifuge which probably is a flow type model and needs to be installed in a central facility where all the students can access it or it is a small compact handy centrifuge that you can have maybe a few of these installed in your laboratory close to everybody's workspaces based on the space of your laboratory. Based on these properties, there are uh, totally five kinds of centrifuges that we will be discussing today. Of these, the first four are preparative centrifuges and the last one is a modification of the ultra centrifuge that is the analytical ultra centrifuge. Uh, the difference between a preparative and the analytical centrifuge is a preparative centrifuge is simply for the purpose of separation or sedimentation. But the analytical centrifuge allows you to observe this process, the process of centrifugation in real time using some optics that are installed in the centrifuge. And this, uh, this will give you valuable information about the physical properties of your sample. That is its molecular weight, its sedimentation coefficient and whether your sample is homogeneous or heterogeneous, things like that. So let's talk about the first centrifuge on the list. The first centrifuge on our list is the microfuge. A microfuge is so named because it can only accommodate very small vo volumes of sample at a time. That is, it can accommodate anything in the range of 0.5 to 2 ml. The maximum velocity that the microfuge can reach is around 10,000 g. Although uh, in the recent years there have been instruments uh, like companies have been coming up with instruments that have exceeded this limit. But essentially a micro uh, microfuge is, an, is a moderate uh, velocity centrifuge. Now, uh, microfuges are usually very bench, very compact, benchtop handy instruments and you can install this very close to your workspace so that it's very easily accessible to you. Uh, usually, microfuges are meant for very quick short centrifugations. For instance, if you would like to centrifuge something for a minute but at a high velocity, then microfuge is the one you would go for because they are, uh, because they are usually coupled with very fast uh, acceleration and deacceleration instrumentation. So they can reach higher velocities in a very short span of time. Now the main application for microfuges is, the first application is that, uh, the most common one, is it is used for protein concentration. So for instance, you have just purified a protein and uh, through column chromatography and you would like to concentrate it, let's say some 10 to 20 times in a single spin. You can, use, you can do that in a microfuge uh, by using those tube-based concentrators, the micro spin columns that are equipped with the filtration, uh, the filter. So you can just concentrate your protein in a single spin by 10 to 20 fold. The second application would be, uh, let's say you are following a molecular biology protocol like DNA isolation or RNA extraction and these protocols usually call for many short centrifugation steps of one minute or so and it would become very tedious for you to keep going to a large bulky centrifuge that is really far away from your workspace. Instead you can have a handy microfuge very close to your workspace and you can perform the short spins in that so you would end up saving a lot of time.
The second type of centrifuge on our list is the large capacity low speed centrifuge. Now these centrifuges are only able to reach velocities, low velocities of the order of around 3000 to 7000 G. And that is because they are operating with very large volume of samples that is around 250 ml or maybe even a few liters in a single spin. Uh, these centrifuges come in handy when you're dealing with large volumes of samples. For instance, you might want to separate the cells or pellet the cells down in a large volume of media, let's say 5 liters. In such cases, these centrifuges can process your sample in a matter of a few minutes. Now these centrifuges are usually very bulky and they come in flow type models. Even as a benchtop model, you would find that these centrifuges would be much larger than your microfuge. The third centrifuge on our list is the high speed refrigerated centrifuge. Now this centrifuge can go up to velocities ranging um, like of the order of around 100,000 G and this speed is very very high. Uh, so it's able to perform almost all kinds of cellular or subcellular fractionations. So for instance uh, separation of uh, cell debris from uh, a homogenized cell sample or separation of larger organelles from this kind of a cell sample or even differential separation of organelles from each other for instance you might want to separate nucleus from mitochondria and uh, the chloroplast so you can do that however it is not suitable for even like smaller organelles for instance ribosomes and microsomal vesicles these type of organelles which are like much smaller than the nucleus require even higher velocities the high speed centrifuge almost always comes with a refrigeration control and that is because at such high speeds there are uh, there is generation of a large amount of heat which can damage uh, samples especially by macromolecules and that is why you would want to have the, re the refrigeration on while you are operating the high speed centrifuge. The fourth centrifuge on our list is the preparative ultra centrifuge. Now these centrifuges operate at even higher velocities than the high speed centrifuge. They can reach velocities up to 900,000 G and uh, this high speed is very much useful for even smaller organelles like ribosomes or microsomal vesicles. Uh, now, uh, operating at such high speeds leads to a lot of frictional resistance and heat being generated. And to counter that, the rotor chamber is almost always evacuated and refrigerated before the centrifugal run. And you might like to go ahead and do that maybe an hour prior to your run. So, uh, operating this kind of centrifuge requires a lot of planning from your side. That is, uh, like maybe an hour prior to your experiment you have to switch on the centrifuge and uh, create a vacuum in the rotor chamber like putting your samples inside and then creating the vacuum and refrigerating the centrifuge to reach a lower temperature before you can run it The last centrifuge that we are talking about today is the analytical ultra centrifuge. Now this is just a, a modification of the preparative ultra centrifuge because, uh, because it is uh, very much similar to the preparative ultra centrifuge except that it has an optical system which consists of a laser and a detector. And what this optical system is meant for is it uh, allows you to observe the sample settling, the sample settling or sam sample sedimenting uh, in real time as it happens basically it monitors the change in the ri of the sample as it is sedimenting and this is uh, very crucial because it gives you a lot of uh, information about the physical properties of the sample uh, and uh, information about its homogeneity or whether there are many different interacting species present in your sample Now let's talk about the safety features in a centrifuge. While using a centrifuge, you must balance the rotor properly. Uh, what this means is, since the rotor is circular and symmetrical, if you place a sample at A, then you must have a similar weighing sample at B. In case you don't have another sample uh, to centrifuge, you must uh, at least have a counterbalance or a dummy uh, sample in the form of a uh, tube having water. Uh, placed completely just opposite to where you're placing your sample and uh, uh, if you don't do that 
then what happens is it uh, leads to rotor imbalance an imbalanced rotor will vibrate a lot and these kind of vibrations can be carried over to the framework of your centrifuge and ultimately it will make the centrifuge uh, maybe wobble in case it is a low weight centrifuge or a benchtop version in fact i have seen centrifuges with fiber fiber bodies getting cracked because of these uh, imbalances in the rotor so balancing the rotor is like crucial however modern day centrifuges do come with a kind of fail safe so what they have is they have a flexible driver shaft and what this does is it absorbs or dampens any kind of minor rotor imbalances and it prevents these vibrations from traveling to the framework of the rotor and therefore preventing the wobbling of the uh, sorry framework of the centrifuge and therefore preventing the uh, wobbling of the centrifuge on the whole however these driver shafts are not really uh, meant for major rotor imbalances rather just just to absorb the very small minor imbalances so balance your rotors Thank you students that's all for today if you like my video please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button